In this tutorial, we're going to cover some more shapes of molecules. But as you can see down here from the left hand side, we've got a range of different molecules. Uh, each one has, an, has a charge on them. So we're going to look at the shapes that you get when you have different charges. Now it doesn't really make things much more complicated, but you do need to take this charge into account when you're actually working out shapes. So again, easiest thing is just to look at some examples. So if we start here with the ammonium ion, we've got nitrogen in group five of the periodic table. So five bonding electrons. We have four hydrogens attached. Add these two up together and we end up getting nine. So we have nine electrons available for bonding at the moment. Now, what we would uh, do next is we divide this by two normally uh, to work out the numbers of pairs of electrons. But obviously if we divide this by two, we end up getting four and a half and you can't possibly have four, or you can't possibly have a half an electron. So what we need to do is have a look back and have a look at the charge of the iron. So we can see we've got a plus charge here. Now if you have a plus charge, what that basically means is there's one extra proton in this molecule compared to the electrons. So we can take an electron away here. So we minus an electron to make eight electrons. Divide that by two, and now we have four pairs of electrons. Now you can see we have four pairs. We can compare it back to the original structure where we have four hydrogens bonded. So all those pairs of electrons are involved in bonding in this situation, and we have no lone pairs here. So let's have a look. You should probably be able to predict what it's going to look like now. So if all pairs are involved in bonding, uh, there are no lone pairs. That means we should have a tetrahedral molecule. So our nitrogen in the center, and we should have one hydrogen on the flat of the board, one coming towards you, one going away, and then we should have a, another hydrogen here, again on the plane of the board, on the flat plane of the board. I'm just going to remove this so it doesn't confuse with the charge of the iron. So, the shape of that molecule, again, you should know now, is tetrahedral. We should have 109.5 degree bond angles because we have no lone pairs. So that's 109.5 degree bond angles, and uh, we have a tetrahedral molecule. So we have tetrahedral. It's going to have exactly the same shape as any other tetrahedral. The bond angles are exactly the same. Uh, you'll learn a little bit later on in the course that this will be uh, that one of these is a dative covalent bond, but that's to cover in another video. So that's one example. Let's have a look at another one. Uh, we'll have a look at the hydroxonium ion next. So we'll have a look at hydroxonium uh, next. All right, let's remove this. So if we have a look here, our central atom oxygen, group six, six electrons in the outer shell. We have three hydrogens attached. In total, that makes nine electrons. Again, we have a positive charge here on the hydroxonium ion. So what we need to do is take one away from this to make eight electrons. Turn that into pairs. So here we have four pairs of electrons. Looking back at the hydroxonium ion, we can see that uh, three hydrogens are bonded and um, therefore we must have one lone pair here. So we have three bonded and one lone. So let's have a look and see what the structure would look like here. So we've got our oxygen here at the top with our lone pair of electrons. We have our three hydrogens, one coming out of the board, one going into the board and one on the plane of the board here. Now remember, for every lone pair, you take off 2.5 degrees. Now we need to work that out from the number of pairs of electrons in total. So we compare it back to a tetrahedral because there are four pairs of electrons. So we need to look at 109.5 degree bond angles. We minus 2.5 for the lone pair. So that leaves us with 107 degree bond angles. So 107 degrees. Okay, so we have 107 degree bond angles. And therefore we have a trigonal pyramidal molecule. 
a trigonal pyramidal molecule because uh, we have the 107 degree bond angles and we have this lone pair of electrons which is reducing the bond angle, it's squishing the bond angle down. So let's have a look at the next example, PCL4+. Plus. So we've got our phosphorus in group 5. We have our four chlorines attached. That gives us nine electrons in total. We've got a plus charge, so we take one away to make that eight. Divide that by two, and that leaves us with four pairs of electrons. Again, if we've got four pairs of electrons, all are involved in bonding, as you can see from this. There are no lone pairs, so this must be a tetrahedral structure with 109.5 degree bond angles. Okay, I won't draw that one out because we've seen this one before already in this video. Let's have a look and see what happens when you get CH3 with a minus charge. So, again, carbon, central atom, group four, so four bonding electrons. Hydrogen, we have three hydrogen atoms attached. This, this gives us a total of seven. Now, if we have a positive charge, we would take one away because there's one more proton than there is electron. But in this situation, we have a negative charge, so we've got an extra electron here. So we need to add the extra electron into this structure. So you add one electron this time to make eight. Divide that by two to give you four pairs. Now, we've got four pairs of electrons, three of which are involved in bonding. So that means we have one lone pair and we have three bonded pairs. That's going to leave us again with a trigonal pyramidal structure. We have our central carbon atom. We have one hydrogen coming along the flat plane of the board, one hydrogen coming towards you, and one hydrogen going away. With our lone pair of electrons here on the top. And overall, we have a negatively charged methylium ion. Bond angles again, one lone pair from an original tetrahedral structure, so 2.5 degrees taken away from 109.5, leaves us with 107 degree bond angles, trigonal pyramidal. Final one to look at, thallium chloride. So we have thallium here in group three. We have two chlorines attached. That gives us a total of five electrons. Again, dividing that by two, we'll get a half number. We can't have that for electrons, but we do have a positive charge on the iron. So we need to take one electron away to give us four electrons. Divide that by two, that's two pairs. So here we can see we've got two pairs of electrons so we have two pairs of electrons, two atoms bonded to the central atom. So we're going to have a linear molecule this time because there are no lone pairs. So our central atom, our thallium in the center, and our two chlorines either side, we're gonna have 180 degree bond angles. And that means our molecule is linear. So, hopefully that helps you work out different shapes of ions. Um, the next video is going to look at what happens when you have double bonds, because you need to be able to draw the shapes of, of ions for the carbonate ion, the sulfate ion, and the nitrate ion as well. So I suggest that you have a look at covalent bonding again before you look at those ions, because it will really help uh, with, with drawing them, because you do need to have some prior knowledge of the ions to understand how to draw their structures. Best thing to do is to practice, have a go at lots of different structures before, you, uh, before you're ready for your exams. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe to this video and share it with everybody you know, and hopefully you find this one useful.